Young Math Padawans, it's Mrs. Angel with your lesson for today on an introduction to functions, specifically input and output relations, representing relations as a set of ordered pairs, a table, a graph, and a mapping diagram, and then finally describing the domain and range of different relations. A lot of algebra is the study of functions, linear functions, quadratic functions, so we want to make sure that we understand how all of these work before we start getting into more of those complex functions. So grab some notes and let's get started. So the first vocabulary word you're gonna learn here is a relation. A relation pairs each input with a specific output. Think about how you are related to different people in your family. You're related to your sister or your brother in a different way that you're related to your aunt or your uncle. The same works in math. Each input has a very specific relation to its output. And then as we'll learn later on, some of those relations are also called functions. So what does this look like in math? Well, your inputs are almost always going to be represented as x. So think of an equation, maybe something like y equals 2x plus 1. Um, the x in this case would represent any number that you want to input, and that's where the word input comes from. And that would produce what's called an output, which is normally your Y value. So for example, again, I inputted five for X here, two times five is 10 plus one is 11, which means that my output here would be 11. And that's how the two are, quote, related to each other. So what happens between these two is called the relation. So the reason why these are related is going to change based on the function that you're looking at, linear, quadratic, exponential, et cetera. So in our example here, we chose to input five. Our relation was to multiply by two and then add one, and then we had our output 11. So in math, you're going to see a lot of different representations of these relations. The first one we're going to get used to is called the ordered pair or a coordinate X comma Y. Notice here that there are parentheses around this. That's showing you that this is a very specific relation of input X and output Y. So let's take a look at an example. Here I have a set of five ordered pairs. Can you give me the inputs and the outputs of these ordered pairs? Let's see how you did. So from left to right, I see that my inputs here are negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. So I'm just going to list those out using what's called set notation. Set notation means that you use a squiggly bracket like this, and it's only those specific numbers allowed in those sets, kind of like an exclusive club for those numbers only. So my numbers were negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, and then I'm going to close off the set. Those were the only inputs in this relation. My outputs here were two, another two, another two, zero, and zero again. Now it seems kind of silly to list out the two three times, the zero two times. We're just saying what was represented in our output. So in this case, there were only two numbers represented as our output. And those were zero and two. So I don't need to list them out over and over again to say that they were part of my output. Another thing that I did that you might wanna take note of for later on in this video is I did order my inputs and outputs from least to greatest. So notice that I started with the least input and ended with the greatest input. Same thing, started with the least output and ended with the greatest output. Another way to represent relations is with a table. Now, the most common tables you're going to see are going to be vertical tables. However, you may also see horizontal tables. The X's, of course, are your inputs, and the Y's are your outputs. Let's take a look at an example. So here I have a horizontal table, my inputs X on the top, my outputs Y on the bottom, can you list those inputs and outputs using set notation? Let's see how you did. So my inputs here are going to be all the values of 
listed from least to greatest with no repeat. So my inputs here were negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Our outputs here are Y. And again, they are listed in order from least to greatest already with no repeats. So I can just write those out. So when we're listing our inputs and outputs, we're not specifically showing which two are related to each other. We're just identifying what they were for this particular relation. And that's representing relations in a table. The third and probably the most important representation of a relation is in a graph. You're going to see this a lot in algebra. So a graph, as we learned, is really just the intersection of two number lines. The horizontal number line going from left to right is your X value or your X axis. And the vertical number line going from up to down is your Y axis. So how do you find inputs and outputs in a graph? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Your outputs are going to be whatever numbers are represented on that vertical number line. And your inputs are gonna be whatever numbers are represented on the horizontal number line. So let's take a look at an example. Here I have a graph that already has one, two, three, four, five, six coordinates in it. Can you list the inputs and outputs of this relation? Let's see how you did. This is a little bit tougher to see just from a graph of points. So one strategy is you could write all of these points as ordered pairs and then go in and identify the inputs and outputs. Here's a second way to tell. If I zoom in on this graph, I can see the inputs and outputs represented by each point. And I'm purposely going to go from left to right and bottom to top because I want to list those in order from least to greatest. So the first input that I notice here is for this point right here, and that has an input of negative three. So I know negative three is one of my input values. It looks like this point here has an input of negative two, this input at a negative one. We have a point at the input of zero, and then nothing for a while, and then a point at the input of three, and a point at the input of four. So we just found our set of inputs. I'm gonna go ahead and put those in our set notation. As we can see, they're already listed in order from least to greatest with no repeat. The outputs are a little tougher to read. Let's take a closer look. So again, zooming in here, I'm gonna work from bottom to top so that I'm listing my outputs in order from least to greatest. So it looks like the lowest point here is this one right there. So let's take a look. This point has an output of negative three, a Y value of negative three, which that's how I know that will be part of my output. This next point has an output of negative two, no outputs at negative one. We do have an output at zero again. We have an output at one, an output at two, and an output at three. So it looks like the only numbers not represented in our output are negative four, negative one, and positive four. So let's go ahead and put those into our set notation. And again, we didn't have any repeat values and we listed our inputs and outputs from least to greatest. So this is what a relation looks like as a graph. The final representation of a relation is called a mapping diagram. It starts with two bubbles, one on the left and one on the right. Inside of the bubbles, you're going to see some numbers. On the left, I have negative one, three, and 11, and on the right, four and 15. So the numbers in the bubble on the left are our inputs, and the numbers in the bubble on the right are the outputs. But how do you know which ones go together? That's where these little mapping arrows come in. So arrows will show you which input is related to which output kind of like a map, it's telling you where to go. The input negative one is mapped to the output of four. So that's one of your relations. You could then take this and write it as an ordered pair. Negative one is mapped to four, three is mapped to 15, and it looks like 11 is also mapped to 15. All right, so here we have a mapping diagram. And again, the left side of the mapping diagram has your input and the right side has your output. 
So can you list all of the inputs and outputs of this relation? This should have been pretty easy because your inputs were already listed in order from least to greatest on the left and your outputs already listed from least to greatest on the right. So here, my inputs are and my outputs. The hardest part about reading a mapping diagram is figuring out what input matches to each output. So looking at our example, I can see that 4, 0 is one of our input-output pairs, as is 4, 3. So 4 in this case has two different outputs, 0 and 3. 5, 2 is another input-output pair, as is 6, 4 and 8, 7. So even though you see a bunch of numbers in both of these bubbles, this represents a set of five ordered pairs. The final part of this video is going back and describing each relation's domain and range. And that might seem like a lot of work to do, but here's the cool part. You've actually already done it because the domain of a relation is simply its set of inputs. And guess what the range is? Its set of outputs. So if you look back at all of our examples, we already have this. We were just calling it inputs and outputs instead of domain and range. So let's just go back to our examples really quick and relabel that using this appropriate vocabulary. Remember example one with our ordered pairs? Well, we can now say that the domain were the values, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, and the range was zero and two. And now we've done domain and range. Same can be said for our example on representing a table. In this case, our domain was negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and our range was 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. We already did all of that work. Here's our graph, and once again, that work is already done. The domain of this relation were the inputs, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 3, and 4, and the range of this relation were the outputs, negative 3, negative 2, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Done. Finally, our mapping diagram. Our domain here was our set of inputs, 4, 5, 6, and 8. You could label the set here as the domain. You could also label the domain as everything in the bubble on the left. Our range here were the set of outputs. 0, 2, 3, 4, and 7, or everything that's in the right bubble in the mapping diagram. So just to recap, a relation is how each input is matched or related to a specific output. There were four different representations we went over, and whenever you are asked to identify the domain and range, just remember, the domain is simply your set of inputs. And the range is simply your set of outputs. That's it for today's lesson. I will see you next time.